Hey everybody, Anton Curley here. And in this episode, I'm gonna share exactly what we're doing to continue to be able to get iPhone traffic to our drop shipping stores and how we're able to track conversions even though Tim Cook tried to take that away from us. If you're not familiar with why now it's almost impossible to track conversions from iOS devices within Facebook, I'm gonna link to an episode that I just put out. My advice is go and listen to that one first, then come back here. But the short of it is that iPhones allow people to opt out of being tracked, and most people that use iPhones told Facebook, don't track me. Now, despite what you might see online, there is no software or tool that's going to be able to take the conversion information and send it back into Facebook if the person opted out of tracking. So just know there still is no solution that's gonna get conversion data into Facebook from people that opt out. With that being said, there is a way that you can track this on your own, and there is a way that you can structure your campaigns and ad sets to make sure money still gets spent to iOS users. So what I'm gonna do now is jump in into my ad account, and I'm gonna show you how I set this up myself. Okay, so if you're following along on the video version of this episode, you'll see that I'm logged in to a demo ad account now. If you're listening to the audio version of this and you wanna see the visual, check the podcast description and I'll link you over to it so you can resume watching there. But what I'm gonna do is show you how I would create this for a remarketing campaign, and just know that what I'm about to show you is something that you can replicate on all of your campaigns where you're optimizing for conversions that you want to get get iOS traffic back for. So first thing I'm gonna do is just click create under campaign. So create a new campaign. Let's say this was a conversion campaign. So I'll select that, name your campaign. We're just gonna go ahead and we will call this one website visitor 30 day purchase. And what it's called isn't relevant to tracking or not. That's just a name I'm entering now. So we have a name for it. Okay, so when it comes to ad sets, what we're gonna do is create two of them. One of them is going to be excluding iOS devices, and the other one is gonna be showing to iOS devices. So for the first one, I am gonna call it exclude iOS. And then for creating the ad, it doesn't matter. You can use the same ads in different ad sets, so I'll just call the ad template. Okay, I'll go ahead and click continue. Now, if this was an actual remarketing campaign that I was creating in order to drive conversions and purchases, under conversion events, I would choose purchase. Again, this isn't actually gonna go live, so not gonna do that for this lesson. But what I'm gonna do is scroll down, 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 down. Of course, you would fill out everything else as you normally do within the ad set, not the purpose of this lesson. The purpose is to show you right here, under placements, where we have automatic and we have manual. I am going to select manual, something we haven't done in a pretty long time. But what you wanna do after you select that is scroll down and you wanna click where it says show more options. Now when you do that, you'll see here, it says specific mobile devices and operating systems. By default, devices all. What I'm gonna do is click edit. And then what I'm gonna do is where it says all mobile devices is change that to Android devices only. So now what's gonna happen within this ad set is the ads that we create within it are going to show to all devices, right? Anything, laptops, desktops, tablets, doesn't matter, but they're going to be excluded from iOS devices because under specific mobile and operating systems, I chose Android only. Now you might be thinking, Anton, what are you doing, right? The, the purpose of this lesson is to help us get traffic from iOS. That's true, but if we left iOS turned on in this section right now, the spend from what we've been seeing is not going to go to it because again, it's not going to track conversions. If you need an explainer on that, again, I'm gonna link to the previous episode. Highly encourage you to watch that, then come back here if you haven't seen it already. But what do we do now, right? How do we get that iPhone traffic back? Well, what we're gonna do is, I'll just duplicate this ad set. So I'm gonna hover over the three dots. I am going to click duplicate. I'll just duplicate it into the existing campaign. We will let it load for a second. And now you'll see here, I have the copy. It's called exclude iOS copy. I'm gonna scroll to the top and I'm gonna rename this one. And I'm gonna name this one iOS. So we have one that's excluding iOS and now we have one that's iOS only. Of course, it's not iOS only yet because we haven't done anything to let it know that it should be iOS only. So we're gonna scroll back down to our manual placements. And the first thing we're gonna do, you see right here, it says devices, all devices. We're gonna click edit and we are going to uncheck desktop. So for the iOS only, we have devices and only mobile is turned on. Now I'm gonna come down further to where we were a little bit earlier. And because I just duplicated this, it's showing that it should be shown on Androids and everything. Of course, we don't want that. This is iOS only. So I'm gonna click edit. 
and I'm gonna change it from Android to iOS devices. And as you can see here, now it says iPads, iPhones, iPods, all iOS devices. And we just changed it to mobile only. So what will happen now, if we obviously created the ads within these ad sets and turned it on, is the ad set excluding iOS, again, is gonna show to every device, desktop, laptop, mobile, anything that's not iOS, and in the second ad set, it's going to show only to people that are using iOS devices. This is how we can basically force Facebook to spend money there. But this is important. That still leaves us with the problem of Facebook not getting the data when conversions happen. All we've done up to this point is get to a point where Facebook will spend money there. But the question is, how do we know if it's working or not? How do we know if it's converting? So. What we wanna do is come into our ad for the iOS ad set. And obviously I said ad, it could be ads, depending on how many you have. It's called template, so I'm in there now. What I'm gonna do is scroll down, 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 and we're gonna go all the way down to where it says URL parameters, okay? For those listening, this is at the bottom of the ad settings when you are creating a Facebook ad. And you'll see a little button that says build a URL parameter. I'm gonna go ahead and click that, and you'll see here you can give it UTM information. So for campaign source, I am gonna put Facebook. For campaign medium, I am gonna put iOS underscore all underscore placements. Now, again, you can put whatever you want there. The reason I'm calling it that is because this ad in the scenario that we're building here is only showing on iPhones and when it comes to what placements we selected, meaning where on Facebook or Instagram or WhatsApp do we want it to show, we chose everywhere. So I'm gonna call it iOS all placements. And then for campaign name, we can make this dynamic. So I'll choose campaign name here. And then for campaign content, we can come down here and we can choose add name. Now what this will do is basically pull all these parameters. Every time somebody clicks this specific ad, I'm just gonna click apply here. And this ad that we'd be building in this iOS ad set, every time somebody clicked it on Facebook, when they went to our website, it would add all of those parameters onto it. So this gives us the ability to track internally. Again, that data is not going back to Facebook. Again, if somebody buys, it doesn't change what we see in the conversion columns in Facebook if they opted out of tracking, right? That data is still not coming through. But if we have this set here, and if you use enhanced Google Analytics for e-commerce, which I teach how to set up inside of our coaching program, the Dropship Blueprint, then you'll be able to see the revenue attached to the specific ads in your specific ad sets, in your specific campaigns for iOS only. So what we just did here was allow Facebook to actually spend money. We're forcing it to spend money on iOS because we made it its own ad set with its own budget. And we are getting that data from the URL parameters that's gonna go into Google Analytics. And again, if your Google Analytics account is set up correctly, you'll be able to see exactly how this is performing. All you need to do is compare your ad spend in Facebook with your conversions in Google Analytics, and you can make decisions on how to scale or not. So is it a perfect solution? Maybe not, but it does work, and it brings back the majority of phone users in the States at least, and the majority of money spenders when it comes to mobile. So as always guys, I hope you got tremendous value from this episode. If you did, be sure to give it a like. If you know any e-commerce store owners, please do me a favor and share this with them because it'll only help them hopefully get their results back to where they used to be before, again, Tim Cook and Apple decided that nobody should be tracked. And again, I get it, consumers love it, but like I said in the, uh, the previous episode, advertisers hate it, but it doesn't mean Facebook ads are dead. It doesn't mean throw up your hands and think, ah, I'm not doing this anymore. No, you find workarounds, you adapt just like we always have done. And this is our current version of, uh, of adapting to this. So again, hope you got value. And if you're new here, be sure to subscribe. We have at least two new episodes every single week right here on this channel. So thank you everybody. I appreciate you. And I'll talk to you in the next one.